Edie. I'm Judy. And, and together, together we're, we're the Rainbow, Rainbow Grannies. Grannies. Yay! Whee! And today we have a guest. Hello. <laughs> so Garrison, we're so glad to have you join me and Judy. Garrison. Which I feel is like the stigma that still exists in, in certain communities around homosexuality and HIV and how it drives young men to literally die from shame because they are not wanting to admit they have it or they're not wanting to medicate themselves. And Mateus was one of three um, people that I've known and, and dated that have died from this a disease. Normal life. Like, you know, me, when I contracted it, and, the, and and again, this goes back to having a supportive family, like their first response was, okay, how do we take care of this? Mm -hmm. Not, oh, this is from God. How many years have you had it? Um, so I was diagnosed in January of 2014. Okay. Um, and so, um, at that time I was with Angel who had died in 2016. And so, um, I was in, in, that was a real toxic relationship. Um, I was in the throes of a horrible meth addiction. And even though I knew in January that I had HIV, I ignored it that whole year. And, um, cause I was just so wrapped up in this toxicity with Angel and, and that, but, um, <laughs> so in November of 2014, I, um, I tried to leave Angel and there was a physical altercation and I, um, I, I, uh, I was arrested for assault. And, um, but I, I went through probation and everything, blah, blah, blah. But jail, when I got to jail, I, um, they, they forced me to start my HIV medication because I, you know, I told them I was HIV positive, but I had never, and I was at AIDS. I had technically had AIDS at that point. My T cells were at 65 and my viral load was like upwards of like 300,000. Basically being ignorant like I am. So you're able to reverse that. Yes. I mean, I was really sick that first week. You like I, I, me. You have to forgive me because no, no, no. I'm okay. just like uh thousands of other people out there that will probably view this video on the fact that the fact they're they're ignorant to how it all works and what all Right. And for me, the whole world different because the AIDS epidemic hit its peak in the 1980s and that still was in my head. And that's why I yeah. thought it was done. I didn't think anybody was contracting HIV anymore right. in the gay male community. Yes, I know, but it's still a whole new side of that going on. Yes. So how did you pull yourself out of it? So, um, so really, um, I had to get away from Angel and get into jail. Like that was my saving grace, getting arrested for that. That's why it was like, you know, some some people go to jail and they don't learn from it or don't rehabilitate. But me, I like was a total blessing for me because um, the doctors there, they they said, okay, well, you have HIV, and then they ran my blood, and and then like I said, my T cells were at 65. A normal HIV patient, they want 300. Um, and my viral load was just like through the roof. And so um, they started me. It was a three pill cocktail at first. Um, like they normally do the uh, I can't remember their names but it, completely sick in jail during Thanksgiving and the holidays away from my family it was just one of those rock bottom moments where I really you know but by March of 2015 because I got out of jail uh, uh, went on probation and everything but by March of 2015 I was already showing undetectable um, because I just responded so well to um, the HIV medication and there's so many different medications out there so once I left the Parkland system and went to um, so uh, it's called uh, Prism Health North Texas and it's a and it's ran through a, a, a community called AIDS Arm and they help people get into these uh, clinics and you get Ryan White and then you know and so um, uh, they switched me over to Trimec it's one pill a day I'm fine I'm healthy I'm like so it, your health insurance pay for that pill so no, so um, I, so I'm a server slash bartender, um, and so the income is just never like, or the, they never offer us health insurance. So um, the Ryan White program is what uh, the state of Texas and and I, it's federal uh, the, uh, coverage for that HIV medication. And so through AIDS Arm, if you are um, below a certain income level, they will. Um, um, uh, put you on the Ryan White program and then cover you through this clinic through uh, for like doctor visits and stuff like that. Uh, at least all we can do is be grateful that you're on your medicine and you're doing well. You look healthy, and you. Yeah. And so you say you were having you were exposed to meth. How many you years did you use meth? So let's see, 2009 to 2017. Wow, that's a long time. 
to come out? And it started off smoking, you know, but then over the years, it just gradually went heavier and heavier to where I was shooting it up at the, at that, at that end. But like, again, Mateus was my angel, my saving grace, because he met me and I was still in the throes of all of this addiction, but he helped me get to my classes that I still needed to finish for probation, helped me kind of like gain this focus. And I was just like, why are you being so nice to me? Like, but he just saw, <laughs> but he saw, yeah. And it's just like, he saw past the, the, the brokenness on the outside and like really got to me, like in a way that nobody in my past ever had. And he put me back in good graces with my family and got me on this road that just like, I'm not broken now. Like I'm not, so even though I've lost him, I'm not broken and I don't need fixing and I don't need all of that. Like, you know, like I, I'm sad and I'm grieving his absence, of course. But I, like I said, it's just made me more determined to do something with myself to better our community and like bring awareness to this issue. It's grace too, because if I had stayed with Angel, I probably would have ended up like Mateus getting really, really sick with a whole bunch of infections and dying because my T cells were just almost at zero. And um, so things happen for a reason. I know that's a platitude, but now, yeah. well, now what's important is you work on your health. You know? Oh, of course. Your, your, your heart and your health and stay safe. And, and just the fact that, you know, you got to be strong because you've gone through a lot. For a young man that's, you know, 33 years old, you've gone through a lot. You've been through a lot. So, you know, got to stay, stay tough. Yeah. And that's the thing that this is, this has changed my perspective a lot. And like um, my sister, my older sister, she's a nurse and um, um, she is like, Garrison, you need to go to nursing school. Like they've been saying that since like I was taking care of my grandma. Cause they said like, I just have that skill. And so like, actually, they're actually sending me to nursing school. Okay. So I'm like, okay, so this is, you know, and I was talking to the counselors there at the hospital and like one of them, Terry, she said that her father dying from cancer um, is what pushed her into nurse counseling. And that's what I want to do. I want to go into nursing slash counseling. So that way I can get out there and really prevent another Mateus, another angel, another tomorrow, you know. I think you'll be very good at counseling and, and helping. Um, it just can't be in vain. None of it, you know. Yeah. Yes. I and if I were to self-destruct and go back down that dark road, because that's what was the first concern of my family. They were afraid I was going to relapse and like go. But I said, you know, like he pulled me out of that dark hole when he met me and just by showing kindness, you know, and yeah. So going back that way would just disrespect his memory. So no, you charge forward and you do something to prevent more from going down that horrible death. I mean, it's, it's the horrible way to go. Exactly. <laughs> Right. Well, that's what it sounds good that you, you've got a goal for yourself and you're working toward that. And what will also be good for a counselor and for nursing, you're just going to be doing a world of good because you know where everybody's coming from. Too, okay. Yeah, definitely. Hey, I want to thank you all for watching us one more time. We really enjoyed it. So while you're still here, do us a favor. Press the subscribe button. And hit so, the bell so you get notification whenever we put a new video up. That's right. And we want to thank Garrison for sharing this afternoon with us and, and yes. all the nice topics that we covered. So thank you. Thank you so much as well. Bye. Bye.